welcome to the plushy palace steps as I call it and these are all the plushies that I have put together for this upcoming market this weekend top shelf is the loaf cats I have made courtesy of the Ella at No Catchy Names tutorial next level is the axolotls the pink one I made before but the two the new baby one is a tutorial I've tried out and the other one's the same as the pink one, just different colorway. Then I have the Octos. I've shown some of those before. The purple plushy one is new. The little pink one and the tiny, tiny baby green one and the candy one, all new. And the turtles, the one in the middle I've made a while back. Um, the green, jade green shell is a Ella tutorial, no catchy name. I really like that one. And the purple and pink one is a paid for pattern uh, that I talk about in the video. So there you have it, my plushies that I have made. Hopefully they will sell. Tonight is Friday night. They get priced up, ready for sale on Sunday. Okay, guys, have fun. Back to the video. Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to today's video. Yes, it's been a while been very busy with markets prepping and having the market and life things just got in the way every time I thought I'd do a video I never got around to it anyway this is market prep and market result video it'll be a bit of a jigsaw puzzle I did take some video along the way but I'll put it all together and hopefully you'll enjoy the content and learn how I, a little bit about how I do my markets so now I only do three a year and basically the net profit goes to some sort of charity or charitable idea. So November market. I did my first one last year and it was my best ever market ever in all the years. I had great sales and good results. I'd never sold that much at a market before. So I was looking forward to this one and having great sales. And in Prepping for this market, because I'll start with the prep, I thought, well, I've got an awful lot of stock that I can sell. I have um, been doing stuff all year and just putting it aside. I haven't sold much in my Etsy shop, mainly because I forget to put it in there. And I thought, well, I've probably got enough stock. But then talking to a few people, they told me I should have some plushies. And that I should try some plushies out and I gave it some thought and then I saw the loaf cat tutorial by Ella at no catchy name and I thought well I'll give that a try and then I started to suffer from shiny object syndrome and fell down the rabbit hole of making plushies but not always with success so this was my first ever loaf cat that I made. All the links to the tutorials, patterns, channels I mentioned will be in the description below. And yes, I really loved it. I made three more in different colours and I got better with the nose and whiskers. These are the ones I haven't sold because this is after the event and this is the other one. Now we gave them names. It was Reeves who said make three of everything in the plushies which was hard work on my hands. I do find it hard. So this one we decided we'd call Lolly. Like we call, you call it candy, UK call it sweets, we call them lollies. And this reminded me of these little lollies I used to have as a kid. So we called her Lolly. I made this one and I did the eyes a little different and the face and Rube said, it looks like a Siamese cat. I also made it smaller. But uh so this is Sam the Siamese. Now I made a third one which I sold, which was in orange and called Jaffa. The guy of about 20 bought him and he was raving over him. Anyway, back to prep. I was making these plushies and watching different channels that use plushy yarn, and the majority really like Premier parfait chunky and I had the opportunity to buy some which I showed you well for me bleh. look 
I know it's a chenille velvet yarn. I don't know if I got a bad batch, but the purple one I went to use, which was eggplant, literally was falling off in my hands before I'd even crocheted it. I couldn't crochet with it properly. That was the first ball. I did manage with the second ball. It would break. Here's an example. It just breaks. It, the fluff was falling off. I couldn't get it to work. So I'm thinking, I must have bad yarn. It can't be like this. But I did with the second ball make an octo. I had to do yellow because when I used the purple for the the tentacles, they look small and ridiculous. So that was an octo I made. I also, excuse me a minute, managed to make the octos are um, the tutorial and pattern I follow is by the dabbling hook. I've always done her octos. I love it. So then I made a turtle and that was a no catchy name tutorial which I really loved and I made it this one. That's where I was trying to make a turtle and it kept breaking. This is the second ball which worked out a little better but not great. I also bought this colour, I've forgotten what it's called, which is da -da -da -da, peacock. Now the peacock was better. It didn't fall apart like as soon as I touched it. And I did make a turtle with this one and I actually sold that turtle. And yeah. I don't know. I'd really like to be able to try before I buy these plushy yarns because these were quite expensive for me to buy and I won't recover my money on the purple because I wasted so much of it just falling apart. I will do better with the peacock. Tell me, if you've used the Parfait Chunky, have you ever had a really dud ball where it literally is falling apart in your hands? You can't crochet with it because that's what was happening to me with the first ball. So that was my, I've made, I made another axolotl. Ta -da! In blanket yarn, this is my axolotls. So we'll get back to market prep. That was my rabbit hole of falling down plushies. So I made three cats. I had three axolotls. I made a big one. I had one already made and I made a baby one. I had three turtles, one I'd already made, a palm turtle that I wasn't impressed with, and two others. So what was that? Three cats, three axolotls, three turtles. That was it, I think. And three octos. I had three octos. I had three or four items, 12 items. So the market I was going to is a fundraiser for the Leukemia Foundation. So basically, we're in this at the showground in this big shed that's very ventilated and they've since put in like really big commercial ceiling fans to stir up the air and it's always been very popular when you come to the market you make a gold coin donation at the door to enter the markets the food stalls are outside so they're nowhere near the craft products there's no food smells they have powered sites outside and you donate an item along with your fee. So the fee was $55 and you donate an item to the Leukemia Foundation raffle or scent sale. And so that's about it. That's the stall. And basically you can bump in on the Saturday after lunchtime and do some setup. A lot of people fully set up. I only set up my tables and stands. I don't put my product out. And I was glad I didn't do that. And yeah, then you go, it goes from 8 till 2 on a Sunday morning. And I get there about 6.37 with Thing. He helps me finish setting up. Usually goes and gets me a coffee if I haven't taken one with me. So I made the three cats from the loaf cat from Ella at No Na Catchy Name. The... Um, Octos were from the Dabbling Hook. I've always done hers. And the Axolotl is a paid-for pattern, the big Axolotl. I'll have to put a link to it in the description below. I can't remember. It. The Baby Axolotl was a free tutorial that I found out through another channel. And the, two, the Turtles, well, two of them were from Ella at No Catchy Names tutorial, which were better than the one I actually paid for a long time ago. So I basically used 
some of the plushy yarn but blanket yarn seem to work for me now we don't get a lot of variety here um, there is blanket yarn at spotlight which is mode of Vera blanket yarn 300 gram balls 100% polyester 150 meters per ball and you can use an eight millimeter if you want to use it to the, but I was using much smaller um, at the time when I was buying it um, it was on what they call VIP special because I have a VIP card so I was getting it for like ten dollars a ball and when you think I paid nine dollars for parfait chunky that fell apart which didn't include the postage to get it here it wasn't great value so some of the yarn, other yarns I use like the candy cat and I have this one because I've got the green out we get mil, what we call mill ends and these were on VIP special either 10 or 12 dollars for 400 grams and you can't really tell what they are this was a mill end and it was beaut it's beautiful and soft yarn this is one I bought but it's a lot fatter and I, I, there is a lot more of it I haven't decided what I'll use it for but they've just started to get more of the mill ends in of the blanket yarn it would be really nice if there was some plushy yarn available locally I could check out before I buy or I could try before I buy Australian plushy yarn because it's really was quite disappointed I really like premier everyday DK anti-pilling but I can't say whether I don't know if I'd ever rush out and buy more of the parfait chunky because of the way it was for me other than I made those for the market and I have a lot of stock I've now done half of the inventory of what I took and without counting shawls and baby stuff that I took I had three thousand dollars worth of retail stock with me which is absolutely astounding I also talking to Reeves um, I do my tea towels with tea towels hoppers they've always been a good seller I think the most I've ever sold at a market is 39 and he said as I sold out last year at 29 I had none left he set me a target of 50 and I must have miscounted because I did 53 so these are some of them so that's the six dollar price range they are double over like that there quite thin cottony and they're the six dollar range I have three price ranges I have eight dollars these are better quality they're folded over and that's the eight dollar range there's all different varieties and then I have my ten dollar range which is these ones they're folded in they're toweling and they're really popular especially this the black I can put all different colors but they love the black so they were the market prep that I did I fell down the rabbit hole with shiny objects soon I'm making these plushies it hurts my hands I can't say that I would ever make a lot of them um, also other than the loaf cat and the turtle I find them quite boring I wanted something more interesting I like the axolotl the turtle the octos I've made some money in the many in the past sorry that it's almost second nature to make them but it often depends on the yarn on how they turn out so that was the marker prep I did have a stand up here with everything on it that I took a bit of video and I'll have that to it after this bit and then we'll get into market results I don't think I've got anything else for my um, market prep but what I did find out as we get into market review part two a couple of days before the market came around two other markets decided they'd go ahead on the same day one was here locally which wasn't very big and one was the other side of the city further south in a shopping center so I thought well that's going to affect sales because people are going to you know drift around they might not come into the city for the market and so I went to the market with no great expectation I did set myself a goal of doing a hundred dollars more in sales than last year 
even though I knew there were going to be two other markets on. The weather is extremely hot at the moment. We're going through a heat wave because we're going having bit what we call build up into our wet season and it, Sunday was extremely hot. So I'm thinking people won't want to come out in the heat either. Well, I was pleasantly surprised. It was slow to start, but it did pick up. There was no mad rush. It was just a steady flow of tra traffic from 8 a.m. till about 1.30, and then it started to die. Did I meet my goal? Yes, I did, and plus. I did $178 more in sales than last year and was absolutely astounded because it didn't fit. Last year, it felt frantic this year. So yes, again, I've had my best market day in November at this charity uh, market and I really do enjoy it. So as far as my best sellers go, so I'll give you my five best sellers. Starting at number five was my $10 amigurumis. So along the way, I've made different little amigurumis and I sorted them into price groups and I had a price group of $10. There's a mixture. There's monsters, there's octos, there's rabbits. There's all sorts of little things I've made that I think I could get $10 for. And I sold four of those. My plushies, how did you think I'd go? Well, I wasn't sure I'd even sell one. I can't say that I've seen a lot of different markets here, but I do know now the lady who does the Palm Cove market, which is further north than me, and I don't go there because she's been there for years. She's doing plushies now. I sold five of my plushies. I sold two turtles, an, ac at the, an adult axolotl that I called Rosie, and a baby axolotl, which I will make more of those. They were really popular. So that came in at number four bestseller. Number three bestseller. I'm absolutely astounded. I sold six tea cozies. Six of my tea cozies went. And I'm really happy because I sold my scarecrow tea cozy that I made for Hooker versus Hooker. The couple that bought it, they bought two. They fell in love with it. They really wanted it. And because they were buying two, I gave them a bit of a discount, which they're absolutely wrapped in. They're going to the UK for Christmas and then gifts for people over there. And someone over there really likes scarecrows. So that's where that's off to. And that tea cozies came in at number three. I also sold mug cozies, not that many. I had them sitting with the tea cozies. One of the ones went to a little girl that I made with Coco's Crochet when she was doing like gift make-alongs. And I made some cup cozies and I sold her one of those. She really loved it. And yeah, she was going to do it up for Christmas for her mum. It had a red heart on it. So she really liked that. Number two, second bestseller, came in with my $5 amigurumis. I sold seven of them. They're smaller. There was all sorts. Same thing, frogs, chickens, all sorts of things I sold from the five. And I sold seven of them. I think I had 12 on hand, but I sold seven of them. My number one bestseller. What was it? That are tea towels. I sold 33 tea towels from all across the price range. I must admit my best selling price range is the $6 one. For some reason, they love these. I think I made 10 Christmas ones and a lady, my first tea towel customer, bought six of them straight away. She had a, um, a little disabled daughter with her with long hair, so I gave her a free scrunchie because her hair was down and it was quite hot. And I said, would you like to tie, tie your hair up with the scrunchie? And she was wrapped. But yes, out of 53 tea towels, I sold 33. The thing, the notes I have made is with the Amis and the toys, Amigurumis and toys, there was a lot of comment where they were looking for ones that didn't have artificial eyes. Didn't matter the age group, they didn't want artificial eyes. They wanted embroidered or handmade eyes. 
so that's something I've taken on board um, I didn't get a lot of interest in the loaf cats I was really surprised because this is a really cat area people we've got so many mad cat women and men here but yeah there wasn't that much interest in the cats it was the turtles the turtles and then the axolotls I I sold out of the turtles in the $10 group turtles in the $5 group turtle key rings I had a couple of those and the big turtles so obviously I need to make turtles and as I said, my $6 price group in my tea towels was the best. I have bought some other quality tea towels that maybe next year when I do them will be $15, but I'm not sure people will go to that price point. My friend Ulia came along the day before we'd been to crochet for cancer and met up and had coffee and a bit of a chat and I donated something to the group. And then on the Sunday, she came to help me with the stall keep me company and she'd had a really busy friday setting up the um ken's poppy on display around the sculpture at the tabrook pool which was amazing so i thought she'd be too tired but she came along and she sold poppies now she sells poppies for ken's poppy on to help with the displays or for legacy legacy is connected to our rsl legacy is like a fund that helps veterans widows and orphans so during like remembrance day and special days she donates these poppies she makes and she sells them and she sold quite a few poppies she has three dollar and five dollar poppies i'm trying not to stab myself with a brooch pin this is Uria's poppy i bought one off her because i really love them this is her five dollar one these were popular they are beautiful she does a great job so it was fun having her along um, I think she spent more at the market she'd go for a walk back around I think she bought all the Christmas skiss at this market I did sell a few of the items that have been donated for Emma's quest so I have a nice little donation to put into her fundraising account um, and that you know that's always nice to help someone like people give me stuff to sell for her so I have a special area set up with some posters of Emma and people buy those. Um, the balance of my profit when I work it out, it usually gets donated to charity, but I have something I want to uh, post to the Northern, Northern Hemisphere, which is going to be quite expensive for postage, but it is something that will be going to a very worthwhile cause. So I probably will use some of that money to pay for postage and the rest will get donated to a charity I haven't really decided on yet there's the Christmas appeal there's lots of appeals right now because of the festive season and no doubt I'll pick one when I'm not so busy and I know exactly how much is left the markets were the plushies a success well I sold five out of 12 so that's a pretty good first start and I learnt a lot along the way. I learnt like I thought cats would be the most popular. No. Turtles in everything. Every shape, form, colour. Turtles. And that might be because we we're near the we're on the ocean and we live near the Great Barrier Reef. Fish, turtles, anything to do with a reef, really popular. Um, so yeah, that's what whether I make a few more for the next market, I don't know. It was a successful day for me to make that much money at one market is astounding and even though it was extremely hot I have my um, what would you call it battery operated fan that charges off the main I had that I had my hand fan I did become a little dehydrated but I had lots of fluid with me I'm just one of those people that I just lose fluid really quickly so my next market is in December I think it's the 14th of December and that's for the charity couch which is a cancer wellness center that's local and funded locally um, they only got their first one last year I hope they promote it more than they did last year the leukemia foundation go all out to promote theirs in November that's why we get so much foot traffic 
men, women, kids, everybody comes to look. So I hope the couch do a job of promoting it more than they did last year. But I still think I'll do reasonable sales and I still want to move some of this stock I have to make room because I just have too much. One of the surprises I made at the sale was an old lady came up to me and says, I don't suppose you've got any covered coat hangers. And I said, actually, and I went into my tub and I had three that I'd made for, I'd made a few for a lady and she only took a few, I think she took five and I had three left over and I showed them to her and she picked two out and she, and I didn't have prices on. So she said, what do you want for them? And I said, I have no idea what they sell for. So she said, this one would sell for about $5. This one would sell for $12. I said, look, I've had them for ages. You can have both of them for $10. And she bought them. So I even moved to really old stock. I sold a beanie. It's like 40 degrees Celsius. And I still sold a beanie for someone who's heading to somewhere cold for Christmas. So, yeah, I still put beanies out. So I'm looking forward to December market in the sense that I really do want to move some of the stuff I've got made that I haven't sold or it just sits around. And then I'll look at giving some more of it away. But yeah, it's hard work setting up, packing up, sitting there. And it can be exhausting, but I'm fortunate that I have Reeves and Thing to help me. Reeves, when I get back home, with thing he goes out and unpacks the car and puts everything where it, it on the patio so I can bring it in when I'm ready the first thing I do is hit the shower because all I want to do is have a shower after it and not that it's dirty it's just the fact that I've been so hot but yes plushies do I like making plushies well I like using blanket yarn with the premier parfait chunky these chenille type yarns I really wish I could try before I buy or at least feel them and see what they're like. Um, I do remember someone sending me Lion Brand Velvet Lux, Vel Lux or something and I made a snuggle slug with it and I thought that was difficult but that's 100% on the purple of this one. I don't know, did I just get a real shocker? But I'm not keen on doing more velvety plushy yarns if they're going to fall apart they cost too much money for me to get i'm quite happy doing the blanket yarns and getting the mill ends in different colors and doing the few that i want to do anyway guys that was my market it was fun and i did enjoy experimenting making plushies i love the people i make my market stall isn't just one thing as one lady said to me it is an emporium of goodies. I have a bit of this and a bit of that. And she, re she said, I love that. She said, you know, there's one over there that's just got toys and one over there that's just got fishing lures. She said, you have a bit of everything. And she said, I really like it. So that's what I'm going to call my store from now. Emporium of goodies. Um, yeah, it was nice. We did, earlier and I met up with a lady. She bought something for a son and we got talking it's impromptu something on Facebook, on Instagram. She has an Instagram account. We worked out, we knew her. She was a subscriber, Uli was subscribed to her, but she wasn't subscribed to us. She has since. She makes amigurumis. She's been going through a bit, of, bit, bit of a difficult life challenge at the moment and she's getting back into crochet for therapy. But look, I'm going to put her Instagram link in the description below. Please check her out. I've checked her out. Uli said she's great. And when I checked her out, I couldn't believe she makes some really amazing things. So yeah, check out her Instagram account if you do social media and subscribe. And yeah, let's help her with her crochet therapy. She was such a lovely... We met so many lovely people. It was just... Nothing bad, nothing stolen, no one angry, even though it's really hot. And we call this time of year is when someone goes tropo and loses it. And no one was. I think everyone's like, it's just hot. Just put up with it. We live in the tropics. That's why we're here. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my market prep and review. Let me know what you think of Parfait Chunky, if you've ever used it. 
is there a technique to using it that I'm not? I'm as gentle as I can be. The peacock was fine. The purple. Uh, the first ball was really bad. The second ball was a little better. But yeah, I sort of lost my cool with it. I think I threw it across the room. And that's when Reeve said, well, that's the end of plushies. <laughs> no, I went back to the blanket gowns. Anyway, I did have fun. I did make some money and I did move some stock. Not much. <laughs> I thought I moved a lot until I had to pack it all up again. <laughs> There's so much. Anyway, until next time, stay safe, stay well and make sure you have one crafty day this week. It will be good for your mental health. Bye for now.